Welcome. Welcome to a special edition here on a beautiful Sunday. Thank you for joining me. I'm glad you've taken the time today to be with us. It's not often we do a Sunday presentation, but uh, today's a special day. And we welcome you back. This is Malcolm Out Loud here. As we do our worldwide stream and presentation, we welcome you in from around the world. It's great to have you with us. We've invited back and an honor to have with us at the studio here, and many of you may not even know, but our studios are in Tampa, Florida. And I don't always say that on the screen, but I'll tell you today where we're at. How's that? Sometimes we're traveling and you never quite know where we're at, huh? Well, we have back with us a guest that you've met before, Vasula Rudin. And you might recall in Meet in Vasula was the very first time we did a live stream. Now listen, I've been doing this, as you know, the live show here, as many of you know, for well over three years now. But we hadn't really done live streams yet, so this was obviously the next step for us. And as I said to Vasula the first time I had met her, I said, well, are you up to doing a live stream? And I thought, you know, if we're going to do this, let's do it with a messenger from God and let's make the subject to God so we couldn't possibly go wrong. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> How are you? I'm fine, Malcolm. Well, Thank good you. to have you back with us. And uh, let me remind folks uh, up front a little bit. If you haven't uh, seen or heard Vasula before, um, you can just, you can, well, first of all, you can go on a search engine and Google or Bing her Vasula, V-A-S-S-U-L-A, and Rudin, but it's spelled R-Y-D-E-N when you look that up, and, and you'll see all kinds of uh, information. This is not a new a gig for Vasula. She's been at this for some time, and uh, we've met uh, a couple, three months ago. Well, actually, it's been longer than that, Vasula. <laughs> I think it is three months ago. It's been February, March, I believe. Uh, yeah, uh, so yeah, we're yeah. in June here, yeah, but yeah. Uh, it's Time been flies. a while. And we certainly have had a great connection and a love affair ourselves. And I think you'll see that with some of the message today. But let me tell you, um, first of all, the book that we talked about early on was Heaven is Real, But So is Hell, was released this March, this year, 2013, in March. And... Uh, the book uh, is fascinating. I have read the entire production, and it's an eyewitness account of what is to come. And uh, basically, it's the messages that Vasula has from uh, really very young in some of the signs that she had seen to many years later on in her, you know, in her 20s and 30s and 40s, and, and she's, what, 37, 38 now, I think, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but uh, anyways... <laughs> Women's not supposed to tell their age, right? You're not supposed to speak about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I get called on it all the time. Well, we're here to talk to you today about um, unity in the church, Masula, and the importance of it. Uh, and I think there's some, uh, some real ideas that people can learn here. And I want to tell folks again up front here, to, they can go to a website, tlig.org, True Life in God, T L I G. Dot org, and you'll find, don't do it now, <laughs> stay where you're at on the screen, but do it in a little bit unless you have a second monitor. And you'll get a lot more information on, uh, on Basula and uh, the movement, the worldwide movement, which started, as I believe, 27 years ago, as I 27 recall. 27 years ago, 1985. In 1985. 1985, yes. Basula, this was uh, an endeavor that is beyond this world, first of all. I mean, the, uh, okay, uh, and we'll talk a little more, we're going to talk a lot today about the pilgrimage, we're going to tell folks about the pilgrimage, the journey forward, but let's start, please, if I might, before we get into the pilgrimage exactly, and you folks are in for a treat when you find out more about this, as I have, you know, yeah. True Life in God, the movement, okay, Vasula? Actually, you call it movement, I don't call it movement, okay. but it is, it's a title, that uh, has been given to me from Jesus to call this uh, message, if you want, uh, true life in God, a true life in God. Uh, now, from 1985, I was called by God in this special way, and that is a gift given to me, for, not just for me, but through me to transmit it to people, and now we're talking about 27 years, so you can imagine how much study was over this uh, revelation uh, uh, that I've been receiving from Jesus and, uh, and the Father, God the Father. 
It has been studied by theologians in mystical theology who are, re who are renowned theologians. And it has been studied by the church as well, the Catholic church and the Orthodox church, because I belong in the Orthodox church. Um, now, they have made studies on it, whether it's a true, authentic calling from God, because there is the gift. I mean, it exists. The gift exists. This is called locutions. When you receive a call from God and you can hear him and he gives you visions and all this, this is called locutions. And I've had that now for 27 years. Many messages were given for our times. And, of course, there will be other people who say they also have messages, but one has to discern whether they are from God or from not, not from God, or from their own spirit, or they just are invented. I don't know. But this message of true life in God, if you go into the website, you'll see how many people have been supporting this who are theologians, uh, bishops, archbishops, and they have studied it. It's something that I have never asked. It's a gift that I've never searched for, never asked, never wanted it, you know, and that was a calling from God. And until I say yes to the calling of God, I went really through a lot of spiritual fires, purifications, and all this. So all this is my story in this new book, actually. Heaven is real, but so is hell. Right. And it is, you know, I wrote it so that people who doubt, perhaps, of the... Uh, the, the spiritual world, I have, uh, so I have been given signs and facts that the spiritual world does exist. The angels, our guardian angels, and also the demons exist as well. And God's mercy is, is shown through all these messages that I've been receiving. Because I'll tell you one thing. When I asked why... Why did you choose me? I mean, I've been a person who's been away from the church, never praying, didn't care about any spiritual thing. In fact, so bad that when I used to take a magazine and they spoke about God, I used to bleep over. So I was a person very far away from God, never searched, never wanted anything like that. And then it came to me, this uh, calling. And I won't go into detail because that will take a long uh, time. But I'm just saying, when I asked him, why did you choose me? I was away from church. I didn't pray. It was a question. He said to me, did you not know that wretchedness attracts me? Through your wretchedness, I shall show the world my mercy. And when I said, I know nothing, you know, you, 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 when, he start, when the Lord started talking, especially about the church, which I had no clue about the church, I thought the church... The Christians were one, I thought. Imagine. Well, uh, I, think, I think most people one think in, that. Like yeah. one church, yeah. and that's it. Right. And that's what I believe because I didn't know there were divisions and uh, different names for, for the Christians. Okay. Yeah. So when I said, but I don't know anything, he said, remain nothing. Through your nothingness, I shall show my power, my authority, authority and that I am. So that was a calling for this mission, but it wasn't put to me straight away, like, you know, I'm going to talk to you about the problems of the church and about unity and the division and all that. No. What the Lord wanted from the very beginning, that's like a teaching, also like a school, true life in God. He wanted, first of all, to purify me through spiritual fires, through repentance, that's a key word, you know, repentance, which we don't think we should repent. What did I do wrong? I didn't steal, I didn't kill, so why should I repent? You know, people are so full of their ego that there's no connection with God. So one has to die to one's ego, self, crucify self, so that the Holy Spirit invades you with his light and then you become part of God, you know, in God and living in God. But, so but that's a procedure. That's a, that's a a way of I going, ask, approaching God. I want to ask you, uh, before we go too far here, please. You mentioned earlier uh, in the messages and the voices that you were receiving in your communications with God. And you mentioned about uh, different people having different uh, messages and voices. 
and I don't know that you can answer this question, but I think I should ask it because I think most people would want to know. If, if you, if, how can one I mean, really know? You just talk about uh, their angel and the Holy Spirit and, 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 or demonic forces around you or other aspects of, or your inner conscience and your, you know, your spirit. How does one know between all of these and differentiate, really? And I, I, I mean, is there an answer to that and knowing with God? or to, uh, What I'm saying is would somebody get one of these others and say, well, I've been speaking to God and maybe it wasn't. That's very difficult, yes. And that is, a, to, to, you have to have the gift of discernment. Discernment is, but then also there are the fruits. If they are good fruits and continuously good fruits, it is from God. Like now it's 27 years, but you'd say, well, what are the good fruits? The, actually, the biggest miracle that can happen is not that a blind man will see or a lame person to, to walk. It is conversion, a change of heart. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking now a, a true conversion, like rediscovering God, getting to know God, getting to understand God. About if you say, well, it could be from your spirit, all these messages, which is really a thick book now. It cannot be because I've never had any catechism. Right. I never had any catechism and no teachings, spiritual matters. Secondly, it, it leaves either Satan or God. There are two more things. Satan, all these 27 years, would he try to change the people into living a life like an unceasing prayer. And if they are Catholics, they will go to their Catholic church, to the sacraments of the Catholic church. Orthodox will go to the Orthodox church. Anglican will go to their church. We're not talking about putting them all in, in their own Baptist uh, church. They will go. When they were baptized in an Anglican church, they'll go to their church. This is, this is all what it's called unity in diversity. So, so there is this happening. There are the good fruits, and the, through, through these fruits, the people who were really uh, changed their heart through these messages and got, went gone, gone back to the scriptures and learned the scriptures and went back to their church. When I had the calling to open houses for the poor, and we have now 32 houses around the world, these same people are volunteer workers who were converted, let's say, changed, in these houses helping out and feeding the poor. So there is the good fruit. There is something coming out. I never wanted this thing to happen to me. I was a happy housewife, and I'm still a happy housewife, but with God this time. Yeah. Because now God is a plus in my life. Before I was just aloof from God, I had my own little life. I used to play tennis day and night. I had my friends. I didn't miss anything. It wasn't like a crisis came into my family that suddenly I say, oh, I, where could I cling on? And sometimes people cling on God because of that crisis. Well, all right. I want to move the conversation along a little bit now to, and I want to talk a little more about the importance of the unity in the church. And, and I want folks, I want you to understand a little more about uh, the power of this and the position of this and why it's important. And, um, and, and also, you know, I, I, I don't know, I have a different belief system, Vasula, a little bit in the fact that I think a lot of people are scared of religion. They're very scared of this and they see it around and they actually run from it. And many times I think, well, you know, and I know because I talk to people, they talk back and to me on sometimes this. Sometimes they had bad experiences with, well, the, with the local... With the church. With the church, church. or the priest, sometimes that. Absolutely, absolutely. And they see that, and then they classify religion and church as God. Mm. Now, talk to me on that a moment. I, am I, what am I missing? You've got here, because I, I hear this all the time. I hear it all the time, mm. uh, very much. Church, religion, God. Uh, how, how do we fit all this? How do we... Uh, mm. Well, you know, I have many people, let's say from my side, who are, I'm living now in Greece and I'm Orthodox and I go to my church and all this. A lot of people would tell me, why should I go back to, to the church when I know that this priest has done some scandals? And I say, look, just go for God, for, go for Jesus. Go in there for Jesus. Don't 
don't go for the priest or for whoever is there inside. Just go and you, then they will say, well, I can pray from home. Yes, but Jesus, he has made, uh, he is, if the church is, all of us, are, we are the church. We are the church and we are the mystical body of Christ and the head of this mystical body is Christ himself. Still, it, we have these priests, we have the clergy who can guide us sometimes. And it's not everybody who is mean or, you know, who has done something evil. There are a selection of good priests also. Vasula, if somebody wants to pray from home and stay, they want to worship at home. They, it's for whatever good. Reason, it's okay. Great. And they, so, Actually, so, remember what Jesus said to me in the unceasing prayer. Meaning, at home as well, praying. Oh, right. But if they are not, if they do not want to go to church to worship, and they want to worship in a home or other places, is this this okay? It, it, it look, I mean, I will feel, uh, I won't feel comfortable to stay home as an Orthodox and not go to my church as well, the temple of God. You would not feel comfortable. No, I wouldn't, because I was brought up in this church, and I I would go to my church. And I know that Catholics would feel the same. Uh, others who are outside, let's say, Protestants and all this, okay, if they feel that they are connected to God that way, it's good. Okay. All right. So, listen, I, all right, I grew up in the, in the Protestant religion, in the Nazarene church, okay, as I've shared with you before, and a pretty strict church, you know, and as a young man in Sunday school and church was was an every week uh, uh, thing for us to worship and you know mm. and, and what have you and uh, um, uh, I seen uh, well listen <laughs> yeah sure I've seen a lot of conflicts in the church yes but I also seen uh, Vasula I mean a, a lot of hypocrites uh, for real I, I, I don't yeah. want to, I'm not going to go I don't want to spend a lot of time on this but I'm just going to mm. touch a moment mm. okay because I want I'm driving a point here. Mm when we talk about unification of the church, okay, mm -hmm. and what we're talking about. And I've seen a lot of people, to me, and, and again, it's just <coughs> me speaking, mm -hmm. that were out, you know, uh, by golly, they, they thought they could sin between Monday and Saturday and act like, you know, whatever, and then come in Sunday and everything was perfect again, you know what I mean? And they'd start the ritual again on Monday, and they go through the next Saturday, and they come in Sunday again, and everything is perfect again, you know, and this, mm -hmm. this is the way it kind of followed. Mm -hmm. It seemed to me like they weren't living their life in the way of what they said they were when they were in church on Sunday. So I always wondered that, you know, with church. And so I try to understand the importance of church, and which I know myself, but I want folks to understand when you're talking about, you know, worship, it's a place to worship. And now we talk about unification of the church. Now here's the thing. You have all these religions worldwide, okay? I mean, and like all of us, like our cultural differences, our cultural diversity, it makes us unique. You're unique. You're Greek. You're born in Egypt. You're very unique. And you, me, as you know, I have my own background, very unique and different. We're all a bit different and unique in this world, you know. But it's the same thing with religion in the way that each religion, and I think they have interpreted many of the principles and even the Bible, in many cases, their own way. This is me speaking now. Mm -hmm. Why is the importance of unification, unifying the church, so, so important? First of all, uh, I'm not here with you to criticize anybody. That I, that's, God is the judge. Okay, we keep this away from criticism. Why does God want, let me just tell you the beginning of what, when he talked to me, when I say he, it's Jesus, about the importance of unity among Christians. First, he gave me a vision of three iron bars. Now, these are interior visions. They are called uh, visions on the intellect. That's the proper word. And when I saw that, because when, he, when the Lord gives a vision, he just doesn't give you a vision without him making you understand what it means. Otherwise, it's useless. So immediately he made me understand that these are representing the three iron bars, the Protestant churches, the Orthodox, and the Catholic Church. Iron bars stiff next to each other. When I saw this for the first time that he was going to talk about the church, I didn't like it. 
because I said so far he was talking about how to approach him, how to pray. He was teaching me the scriptures. Every day Jesus used to come and teach me. And, when he st and I thought that was great. It was like tete-a-tete, -tete, as we say in French, between him and I, and it was lovely. It was wonderful. It was awesome. But then comes these problems of the church, and I wasn't happy. I took my car, and I went straight to the marketplace to forget, you know. But the vision was there. It wasn't leaving me. Anyway, to make a long story short, I came back when he told me, pupil, you have fallen, st stand up and go back and draw this vision. And I went back. I drew the iron bars. It's in my books, in, my, in the book now. And he said, how are we to make their heads meet unless they bend, all of them, bend, all of them, not just one or the three of them, in humility and love, for this is the key to unity. Why is it important for Christ to unify us? Because he left, uh, when he left, he left us one church. He left us with one church. And from that church, he, today he doesn't say it became in three parts. He says you managed to, to, to make it into splinters. Splinters. And this division does not come from God because anything which, which is divided comes from we know who. From the divider, from the accuser, from the devil. And so when the church is in splinters and they don't agree what happens, it becomes so weak because the Lord gave me a word which I didn't know. And my English is okay, but not perfect. When he said, I have to consolidate my church. When he said consolidate, I said, what is this word? But then I found out in the dictionary to strengthen my church. Now the church divided is weak. Many perhaps will disagree. But that is the trouble. They don't agree. When the church is in splinters, that is bad. Okay. That is the best explanation I've heard to date. <laughs> oh, that's just, uh, it tells, it's exactly it. I totally, I mean, that helped me out a lot, you know, just to understand that. Now, I, and we're going to talk a lot more about this here, but I have been watching, uh, because I had not, uh, I was not personally at the pilgrimages, the previous ones. There have been up to date, eight of these up to now? Eight, and this is the ninth, ninth one. one. This August. This August. August 25th. 25th. Fifth, yeah. Okay. August 25th in the year 2013, <clears throat> okay, will be the um, uh, ninth um, pilgrimage, and this one will be in the Holy Land, and they've been all, all around the world. They've yes, well, mainly where uh, Jesus passed and St. Paul, the, uh, right. you know, right. apostle. Right, right. So the chances of having one in uh, this area probably is not going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we bring them over, huh? <laughs> so, all right. Um, so <laughs> but uh, um, now I watched these. I watched these. I had the chance to watch uh, the Rome, Italy one in 2011. Yeah. Okay. I had the chance to watch the 2002 one in Egypt, which is where you were born. Well, that is where Jesus and the Holy Family went for four years, they say, yeah. in Egypt, yeah. hiding from Herod. And I've seen the passage through there and the, the lake behind and the church they built and so on and yeah, so forth. Yeah. And the, the sites are amazing on these here. Are these available through the web? Do you know, are these available? Yes, we can get them through TLIG, the yes, yeah, yes. they're available in there. Anyways, so I watched them and they're interesting because you really get a perspective in like an hour or two about this like week long event that went on for like, you know, it's like fast forward on the DVD, but you, but it, you can understand that of course, it's not really like they're going, la, 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 la. <laughs> they're not really doing that, but it is kind of condensed into an hour or two, right? Yeah. And it's really nice because you've got the whole, you can see the fellowship, but what gets me on this and what just is, just blows your mind is when you see these processions, when you open up and you see all of these religions coming down the walkway in the, the you know, is this usually in a church somewhere? No, no, we have, we can't have that in a church. We are That's about 800 100. people gotcha. okay. and about uh, 100 clergy from 16, 17 church denominations. They're all there. So how many again? 16 to 17 church denominations. Nations, yeah. And the clergy is uh, usually about 100 or so? About 100, 100 yeah. or so, yeah. 
And you got just, uh, give us an example of the kind of clergy that are there. Well, there would be the Armenian Church, the Catholic Church, the Protestant churches. There would be uh, Evangelicals. There would be uh, Syriac Church. There would be Coptic Church, Ethiopian Church, Romanian Church. You know, all the Russian okay. Church. Every, and then they would dress with their vestments, which are, you know, it's so awesome to see them walking together. Together, that's so beautiful. Like one body. Yeah. Walking together, and then in the procession, they come and take the microphone, and they say their name, from which church they, they are, and so that they, pre they introduce themselves to the crowd. What gets me, though, is as I look at the couple of things, there are a lot of things I was, uh, uh, I, 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 you know, was moved by seeing these, okay? And uh, one of them uh, was when um, you would have a, um, a certain... Uh, uh, minister or priest or somebody was speaking you know mm -hmm. and they would do a special service with all of the people there and you could really sense and get a message from them of the vibe you got from them the the the, the vibration about what i got from it was their sincerity mm -hmm. their concern their deep passion for what needed to happen here and some of them, you could also tell, in my opinion, that they were going out on a limb, knowing that their church may not agree with it, or others may not agree with it in the church. Now, am I wrong, or am I right? I think the whole church actually is, is struggling now for years to become, you know, together, reconciliation. And it is going to be a unity, what they're aiming at, it is a unity in diversity, so it doesn't mean that the Orthodox will become Catholics or the Anglicans will become, uh, you know, Orthodox. The, you, you stay as you are, but be together. That's the calling from Jesus. Be together around one altar and pray together. That means becoming one body. Reconciliation and peace. Make peace with one another. Because till today they are still fighting, mind you. Right. They are still fighting. Right. It was so beautiful to see. I mean, it's so, you get all emotion you yeah, know yeah. when we saw one of the catholic priests falling on the feet of the orthodox priest kissing his feet and asking to be forgiven and then it it happened all around then they started to fall on each other's feet kissing their feet and asking to be forgiven for the mistakes of the past or misunderstandings and so in the end there is a unity which is the, that what, what will happen in the future, and believe me, in these pilgrimages, you taste, it, you have a foretaste of what unity will be like. Yeah, yeah. A foretaste. Well, some of the sights and sounds that I've seen on these pilgrimages are amazing. When you take a look at Turkey and Greece and Lebanon and Syria, Jordan, and some of the various places that this pilgrimage has happened. And again, this year will be in the Holy Land. I will be there in the Holy Land this particular year uh, uh, for the ninth uh, uh, annual pilgrimage. And uh, we'll bring you some uh, special broadcast, I'm sure, from there that we are planning to do. Um, but, uh, you know, there's a lot more I want you to know about this. Uh, as I started to watch more and more of this, it was just a truly amazing when you see these uh, people coming together. But what I want to question ahead with Vasula is this. It, it seems to me that they're asking a great deal within the pilgrimage and the messages I'm hearing that we need unity in the church, we need unity in the church, and that you can feel the voices, and you can feel the strength, and you can, you can see all this happening. However... It seems to me like it's already happening, and it seems to me that I, 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 I get the feeling maybe they haven't, they don't think they've accomplished their goal yet, and we'll find out in a moment what that real big goal is, but it seems to me like it's already happening with true life in God. Now, I refer to it as a momentum because I think that it takes momentum to have any movement around the world if you're going to get people to move to a higher purpose, whatever it is, and, uh, and that's, you know, again, me speaking. But we'll find out more from Vasula as we get back here in just a moment again. And in the meantime, uh, for the next minute or so, go check out TLIG.org. It's a good site to get more information on Vasula. Or you can uh, uh, Google her, what have you, and uh, Vasula Rudin. And find out more about True Life and God. And we're going to be back in just a moment. We're going to pause just a, a minute or two. we we'll be right back with you here at Smell Come All Out. Stay with us.
it's Malcolm out out here. Thank you for joining us. It's wonderful to have you with us, and, and I know you're tuning in from around the world, and, and we're thankful to have you on this Sunday afternoon. Joining me again on the set in the studio, we're privileged to have Vasula Rudin. And uh, again, as I've shared with you before, a true life in God. If you're just joining us now, it would be T-L-I-G dot org. T-L-I-G dot org. And that's where you can tune in. So, you know, there's a lot to talk about when we talk about the pilgrimage and we talk about this movement of Asuda that we ended with break, okay? And I want to start there, and I want to ask you, uh, we talk about unification of the church and the importance of this. Mm -hmm. Bring me back to the message, please, when this happened and you decided to make this movement happen. Well, it started by the messages that were uh, given to me by Jesus about the church being divided and how weak the church has become. And when the first time, actually, when I saw Jesus in a, uh, in a vision interiorly, I, I saw him with the eyes of my soul, and his question was, which house is more important, your house or my house? And when I said, your house, which I'm, I knew he was talking about the church, he said, revive my house, embellish my house, and unite my house. Now, when I heard this in the state I was in the beginning, where I didn't even, I knew I had no catechism, I had no idea about church matters, I simply said, Lord, I know nothing. So how can I do what you're asking? And he said, I want a nothing, remain a nothing. I want a, a simple canvas, white canvas, where I can put all my work on that canvas. So remain nothing and in fact die to yourself and allow my Holy Spirit to breathe in you. Allow me to form you and mold you into what I want you to be. That was the beginning. So when he spoke about the house, it was revive, embellish, and unite my house. And then he gave me the vision of these three iron bars that pr uh, represented the Catholic Church, the Protestant churches, and the uh, Orthodox Church. So how are we going to make them bend, those iron bars, so that their heads meet, you know, the three of them, unless they bend in humility and love, because that is the key to unity. And Jesus does not talk about us changing and all this. He wants a unity in diversity. A unity in diversity. One day, when he, you know, I, at that time I was living in Bangladesh, and there was only one church there, which was the Catholic Church. And I was asked to go and meet the priest there by Jesus. So I said, how am I going to present myself as an Orthodox to the Catholics, and he got so upset, and he shouted, he said, Orthodox, Catholics, Protestants, you are all, all the same to me. You all belong to me. And he didn't like me saying, I will go and say I'm an Orthodox. So you see, what we have done, we have really become, you know, so divided, and the Lord doesn't want that. So the Lord was saying to me, I have the lances, uh, sp the, the blade of the lance. Remember when he was on the cross and the, the Roman just put the spear in him, the blade. He says, the blade is still in my heart. Pull it out. Now this is mystical language. Later on, much later on, he made me understand what the lance's blade is in the heart. It's the division of the church. It hurts him so much. He says, my heart is filled with thorns. Pull out those thorns from me. That means those thorns represented those who say they work for the Lord and they are hypocrites. Take them out. Expose them. You know, pull them out. Pull them out in which way? Here is Vasula a housewife, <laughs> with which strength, with, in which way. But the Lord showed me how to go about. That means by making pilgrimages, retreats, 
it's good. It heals the church. Well, this is what's really, really amazing about this, okay? So you, you, you see, you watch the pilgrimage, okay? And you see all of these religions come together, and you see the procession, and you, you just know something is happening here. You just know. You, whether you, whatever your faith level is on the meter, you know something is happening here, okay? And then you see what's amazing is, you see these, these, these again, the pastors, ministers, priests, monks, Every, everyone. Monks, uh, monks too, monks, yes. Monks, they're all From Athos. Mount Athos. From Greece, yeah. Mount Athos is very closed, you know. Yeah. But there are two priests, two monks who are coming from Mount Athos. Okay. And we forget to mention that it's not only Christians who come. There's also Buddhists, Hindus, and Muslims. Why are they coming, Rasulullah? Because they like to feel that they are loved. And when I speak about God, our Creator, that He is our Father, they, they love it. They love this effort that we are all making to reconcile with one another. Because we're talking here about humanity. And we are all creatures of God. That's, we're speaking about and humanity. And that's what I'm presenting. Yeah. Well, but what's really funny about this, though, is when you watch this and you see the pilgrimage, and I'm sure when you're live there, and I, I'll, I will see it myself this next year here, uh, this year uh, in August, um, then you see this woman there, this lady with blonde hair. Looks very similar to Vasula. <laughs> so, Paul, it is a striking pose. I mean, and you're there with all of the, you know, they're all in their dress, right, Vasula, in their attire, yes, okay. very formal. And then, and then many of them have begun to acknowledge, I notice. And, and I know you, you are very, uh, you, I know you don't carry an ego with this. I, I understand this, and I don't, you know, uh, I don't ask you that. I don't need to ask you that. But, uh, but I know that um, there are other people there who have uh, understand what you've done here. And they under this is uh, beyond anything I could you know, ever imagine. There's this a lot of support from them. The true life in God, though, the entire mission and the movement that says that, again, it's, well, you have here, it's an interreligious pilgrimage. Uh, in the footsteps of the Holy Family was the Egypt one again in 2002. And I just find it all just amazing. It's just, you, you have to take in the moment and understand. And then when you see, uh, now, when, all right, so when somebody comes on this pilgrimage, uh, somebody who, you know, maybe it's somebody who is um, uh, looking for answers in their life. Maybe they're already there as a Christian. Maybe they're not. Mm -hmm. But they know this is a place where they can uh, really understand and and see what we are one under the, god's eyes the big picture yeah the splinters as you may i love that description of the splinters you know They're getting that, together absolutely absolutely i mean you could you could just take that and really understand what you're speaking about mm -hmm. and then you understand back when again when he left us initially and there was one church as you say yeah it's see and you forget that vasola you have to you don't remember i mean i wasn't here at the moment so i don't know but you have to bring it all the way back to say mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. it was only one church and like everything else with human beings, we sort of make it complicated, mm. you know? It's a, you know, it, it is better to say the church is still one because the body of Christ is one, the mystical body. But the people of the church divided themselves. Right. But now, all right, so here's my real question on this, so I don't forget. <laughs> when I watch these now, it seems to me like you're already unified. You've already been successful in this, from what I can see. So what am I missing? What's the big goal? What's the goal after all of this? Well, you know, Malcolm, the, okay, the official church, as we call it, that means the officials, the top, like the pope, like the patriarch, like the leaders of the Protestant church, they will have to announce everything, I would say, this kind of unity, which, because we are foretasting a unity already, how the church will be, being together, reconciled, and sharing together, praying together. It has to be announced officially and practiced. Not only announced, practiced. They have not done it yet. So this is already the Lord is doing what is the impossible. In fact, when he used to tell me, do your best and I'll do the rest. It rhymes even, and I like it. Do your best and I shall I'll do, do the rest. rest. I like it, yeah. Do your best. You can't just sit there and say, all right, 
well, I can't do anything. He leads you. He leads you. He opens the doors. And one day when I was frustrated and I said, oh, nothing is really working. The doors are being closed and everything for other matters. I saw him with a bunch of keys. He says, I've got all the keys. I'll open the doors when I want to. Hmm. So you say sometimes, I mean, why, does he, why doesn't he just do it? I mean, he has all the power. He's got all the authority, God. Why doesn't he do it? Why doesn't this happen? But he waits from us to unify first the dates of Easter. This is also important. Right. Let's talk about that a moment. But I want to say back to you, in my opinion, it sounds to me, Vasula, like this is all, like many things, it's a test. It's a test. Well, of course, it's uh, persecuted. Sometimes they don't agree and all this. But this is part of the whole mission. And I will say any persecution is good because the Lord says through persecution you're sanctified. Hmm. So they make it very good for us <laughs> sometimes. There you go. That's a, that's a wonderful way to put it, yeah. yeah. So let's uh, talk a moment. Uh, yeah, um, keep a, I don't want to get too far down a long okay. explanation, but in the, the, the point of two Easter dates, for folks to, uh, listen, I don't think many people understand, first of all, or they're not paying attention within the mm. scope of it, that this actually is, that there are two Easter dates. Because the churches do not agree, the people of the church okay. do not agree. Okay. All right, so uh, what has to happen for that to happen, then, well, this to bring is it back one, to one? You know, Malcolm, this is one of the most, I mean, the most important feast we have in Christianity that proves the resurrection, the, the, the resurrection of Christ, that proves his divinity, see? And yet the devil made it impossible. He, made it, he, div see, he divided us to ridicule us in the eyes of the non-Christians. So they say, look at the Christians. They have that feast which is supposed to be the resurrection of Christ and prove the, the divinity of Christ. And yet one does it in a, a, this month and then the other church does it in the other month. And this year, the Orthodox Church with the Protestant and Catholic Church had the different dates. One month's difference. One month. So we can't even get that right. Not even that right. Yeah. So the Lord is asking the dates of, uni of Easter to be unified. Now, let me just say, I don't, this is not uh, from the message, but this is Vasula speaking. I think that this Pope, Francis, will do something about the unification of the dates of Easter. Vasula, I know you met uh, the Pope when he, uh, just before coming Pope, when he was Cardinal, and very interested, as you know, Pope Francis was speaking about as a new Pope. And um, do you, I, I know you don't maybe know the answers. It, well, do you think you'll meet him again here? God knows. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I, know. So I, I understand. And there are a lot of factors involved in these yeah. things, you know, yeah. what have you. Um, and typically, you know, again, with the church, typically when they get to that level, they're on a, they're, although he seems to be more approachable. Oh, yeah. He's approachable he much more than the others. Exactly. He yeah. seems to be. And again, I bring it back to, it seems to me like Pope John Paul seemed very approachable to me, you know. Yes, he was. Uh, I didn't see that with Benedict. He was uh, more reclusive, you know, just not yeah. really as available, maybe. I don't know, whatever it was. <laughs> uh, but... Um, and again, uh, but you know, even all religions, because they look at the Pope as a central person, even other religions mm. do, and they know that, because mm. let's face it, there's more Catholics uh, you know, anybody on the planet, yeah. Mm. And uh, so it's interesting. Okay, so, uh, so maybe Pope Francis is this, and maybe that is part of the blessing with him there, and maybe, just maybe, because you've spoke to him before and he knows you, that might happen, and just maybe, because you spent 45 minutes with him. And, you and talk we spoke about unity. Yes, just maybe. Yes, and when I said about the dates of Easter, yeah. I didn't know he would become Pope. Exactly. Yeah, and he said, I know the difficult issues the Orthodox have, so they cannot move their date, yeah. because we are already divided among us. So it is easier for us Catholics to move the date and shift it to, to join the Orthodox. Yeah. The problem will be, it's not just the Pope, it's all, it's the entire church. It's, the entire you know, church, the yeah. Pope, sure, but I'm sure that... Uh, <laughs> but you know, let I'm me sure say something. Others. This is the will of, of God, yeah. to be united and to, especially to have one date. Yeah. Because when Jesus said, let them be one Father so that they will understand that you have sent me. Yeah. Like, you know, well... well let me say, Jesus said about the dates of Easter, 
unity and unity will happen because this is the will of the Father. But I'm asking it for, from the people. Either it's going to be with peace terms or by fire. Right. So we will have to, to face either the fire or it's going to happen by us. Right. But unity will happen. And I, I understand that, and this uh, makes sense to me. Uh, understand the message of that exactly. Yeah. So, you know, totally get that. Yeah. Uh, um, so we understand now the importance of the pilgrimage and the 27-year journey that brings it to, again, now the ninth uh, yeah. pilgrimage. That, uh, that, uh, it's going to be for nine days. For nine days. And, you know, what's amazing about this now, so this is the ninth pilgrimage, and in the Holy Land, and, but this is the first time, uh, folks, that they've had Malcolm out loud there. Eh? So, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Anyways, I've watched There's these. There's so many Americans coming. We well, have yes, it on the list. This is the, this, from what I understand from some of the conversations earlier, um, some years, right, that you sometimes only had two or three from America there. and said, oh, come on, we've got to get the Americans there because this is worldwide movement. You know, again, as I say. But actually, this year, it seems like you already have 100. Already 100 you, Americans coming. First time ever. First time ever. Wow, wow. First time ever. And this is, and so we're talking here, and, it, it, and remember, this has been going on, this is a lot of years. Yeah. You know, do the math. We have 50 <laughs> countries yeah. coming. 50 countries. 50 wow. countries. Wow. It's absolutely amazing. And when you see, and, and the other thing I got from this is the, uh, the, um, the, the chance you get to rub elbows with a lot of interesting people, I think. There's a fellowship, fellowship, I'm speaking. You see what I like? I, I just love, I said to you yesterday, I, I love the, uh, the, 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 the diversity in all of us, the cultural diversity. I said to you, how boring would it be, Vasula, if we all looked the same and acted the same on this planet? And these people who is the bigotry and racist and ignorance, and I never understood that. I never subscribed to that. And I think this is what makes us more interesting as people, you know, yes. the shapes and sizes and colors and uniqueness and heritage and background. Mm -hmm. I think it's fascinating. It is like a garden with different flowers. It is. It is. Yeah. So it seems to me like the unity of this is an <clears throat> amazing yeah. message. And I want to say to you, within your journey in all of these years, mm -hmm. within uh, the scope of the message to start the a true life in God, which you set up as a foundation. And I know full well, and I will tell you right now, that, uh, and I know when Vasula has done these things, she didn't do these things for herself. She, this was her messages from God. So like the, the monies that come from these books and the tapes and the things and all of the things that they have all go again to the foundation. That's all been set up that way. She doesn't take anything, even but her commission. The foundation, let me correct you here. Please. It is not actually the foundation. Okay. It is the houses that we have for the poor All right. and for reproducing books. I, 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 I want to clarify something because yes. I get confused on this. So mm -hmm. now you bring that up again. And I want to understand. Uh, so you have to help me out here. The houses of the poor. Tell Beth Miriam, we call them. Okay, yep. And I know you gave me a DVD I'm going to take a look at. I haven't seen this yet. Yeah, so okay. please tell me more. When did this start? What, I have to understand this, the houses of the poor. Well, it started a couple of years back that I saw a vision and uh, I, I heard the voice of our Blessed Mother saying it's not enough to give spiritual food to the people but also you'll have to feed the poor. Immediately I felt it in my heart that this was really a message. I have to announce it and since I know a lot of people around the world because I traveled a lot and we have prayer groups all over the world praying for unity, I uh, asked the people can you help me? Immediately they've had a, like a calling, okay, I, I can open a house, I can rent a place, and they are helping now to feed the poor. And we have one account, which is the, called the Bet Miriam account, okay. for people who want to give some uh, help, you know, donations for these houses. Okay. W w these are in all different countries, yes? And from the books we gather the money and we put it into there. So yes. all different countries? Different countries. Everywhere. Everywhere. Is, is there one in the States? Any in the States? Uh, there was one in uh, Los Angeles. There was one, they closed, but there will be another one opening because recently somebody has offered, offered us a house. Okay. They say you can take our house and put, make a bet Miriam there. Okay. 
Okay. So this will happen. Where will that be? What city? Do you know? Uh, not yet. Not I yet. Okay. All right. I didn't take much information. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So, so that will happen here again. And then, so, and how many houses of the poor are there? How many? 32. 32. And they're all abroad. They're all in different abroad. Countries. There's in Venezuela, in Brazil, in Egypt, in Bangladesh, in India, okay. in Africa. Okay. And so it's all feeded. So again, so the receipts from all these go to the houses of the poor. Yes. I see. Okay, now For I, me, I don't okay. take any royalties from my books, uh, nothing. I know that, yeah. As an author, you can, to remind folks, you are able to, you know, you get a percentage. You don't get it all. The publisher and the other people get something like everything. But you always get a percentage, yes. uh, usually 10, 15 percent, something like that. Yeah. And, um, and even, you know, the, the, the messages, True Life in God, are translated in 42 languages. The book is. So there are, yes. Yeah. 42 languages, not this book, the True Life in God messages. Oh, okay. And oh, the messages. Okay. Oh, because yeah, the the messages uh, are in books. In books. Yes, that's right. That's right. I've seen them all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're fascinating. Yeah, and these are all the messages again that uh, uh, Vasula has received over many, many decades. Twenty-seven years. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so, okay. And and so, how do the houses of the poor then? How does this all work into the true life in God to the the foundation? Well, the foundation was made for administration issues. And for copyrights and all that. Nothing more on, than that, you know. And we have the account for Bet Miriam. People know about it. If they want to give donations there, they give it. And anything extra is reproduction of the books because they cost to, to reproduce. I see. And then my travelings. Right, right, right. The mission. Right, the mission, yes. yes. Which is really it, and this, this is where... But, you know, I, I, um, the other thing I want to mention... And then is, we invite all these clergy, we uh, pay for them. Yes, yes. You've done some, uh, I, 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 real quickly, some fascinating art as well. Vasula is a, um, a, um, truly, truly amazing, some art uh, that uh, is an absolute gift. That just is... Uh, in fact, the... The piece of Jesus Christ that is on the TLIG website is one that you Drew. created, which is just amazing. I've used it several times to on um, pieces to promote the you know the uh, yeah. show and the when yeah. you're going to be here. Yeah, it's just absolutely beautiful. It's breathtaking. I, I used to paint a lot in the past. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I've encouraged. I was so impressed with her work and the eight pieces she has done to signify this work, this body of work, if you will. I had said to her some months ago. I said, you know. You really should try to. I know you're busy, but you should try to have get a couple of new pieces together. <laughs> I told her a while back. I said, I mean, I know you're busy, but wouldn't it be nice? Is she such a gifted artist too? And I thought this is a great way to give back. And she told me yesterday. She said, Malcolm, I'm taking some time. I put aside on the calendar to do a couple of new pieces. That two was more. big news. Two more. Yeah, two more. That's incredible. Yeah. That's wonderful. Good, good, good work there. Yeah. Thank you. I think the artwork is a wonderful representation of many things as your gift and your vision because you paint these, as I understand, just from. You, you don't have a sub. You don't. I mean, you're, you're, you're. I need a model sometimes, so I, somebody has to stay there, and then I change the face. You I know? see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And these are pretty. You did you tell me you do a piece of art like this, and how long? Uh, oh, a, a portrait, because I'm a portraitist, can take two hours. That's it? Yes. So the so, work I've seen, yeah. some of that work, you're talking? I, one of them took me exactly two hours. Another one, I was struggling a little bit more, took three days. Okay. But this work, I want to tell you, it, if you're an artist out there, you know, when you see an artist that's done a, a, a piece of art like this here, I can tell you right now, you look at that art and you say, and an artist will say, Oh, it took me three months. It took me five months. It took me all this time. I assumed you spent like just so much time on this. When you told me oh, two two hours, three hours, four hours, it just doesn't really make sense, you know. <laughs> and that was really it. It's just amazing <laughs> work. That is an incredible gift. Yeah. yeah. I think the artwork. I've tried to encourage Vasula that I think that many people would love to have that art, and I've I've tried to encourage her to uh, to create some. Uh, it, I think from her it would be an absolute gift. Uh, signed art, you know, she clays. And so, so anyways, I've been a little bit of an instigator here trying to get her to put that art out there and sign it. And I think it would raise money for the... Um, we'll uh, get them the in the of, pilgrimage. For the house of poor, is it the one? Yeah, we will get them in the pilgrimage. Yeah, yeah. Some of them. Well, and again, I want to share so we don't lose uh, track of time here, but for everybody, the pilgrimage again. Okay. So, um, uh, 
listen, I didn't know much more than you all. I, I'm not an expert in any of this, and I, I, I you know, I, I looked at it all, as you will, for face value and when I met Vasula. And I will say to you that uh, I expected the nine days out there, um, and, uh, you know, uh, people say to me, how can we go, Malcolm? Uh, how can we go to this event? I had some people yesterday say to me, how can we get to this pilgrimage? You know, so from what I understand, it's all on TLIG.org. Is that right? Yes, you can, you can subscribe yourself. Subscribe, yeah. yeah. And there's information <coughs> about it there, right? It is. Everything is information there. There's a whole program there. Okay. Uh, it's nine days. Why? Because there's the arrival date, which we don't do anything. We okay. just arrive. People arrive from different uh, countries and different hours. And then there's a the departure date. So take away those two dates. Right. It's left to us, the rest. But when I've seen the itinerary, it's very impressive. Every day, they've got it down to really say, they've done this a couple of times, you can tell. Because you, know, you can only do that when you have experience and organization to know what's happening each day like that. But anyways, what I want to share with people, for me, if you will, people have asked me this question. And I said, you go to the site, because I really don't know much more about it. I'm sorry, but I know it's all there. But I, I looked and I asked, how much it cost. I figured this thing has got to be pretty expensive to go to. You know, you're going to have the hotels. They stay at very nice hotels and very comfortable. And, and you're, um, Three meals a day. All the, me the meals are all part of it, too. Three meals. Oh, and that's all part of it. Part of it. And the tour guides and all of this here. And it was, I could not believe the price. I it think was, it was about a thousand. Uh, that's what you said. Uh, a thousand. Something like that. Uh, yes. Whatever it is. We don't have to know exactly. A thousand but, uh, uh, dollars. Whatever yes. it is, it was very, very reasonable. I could very not believe it. Yes. I could not believe it. So, yeah. so obviously, this is another gift back. And you're just the keys. And you get, to, I mean, again, the attendance can be seven, eight hundred people at one of these. Uh, uh, we, today, as of today, we have uh, almost seven hundred people. Seven hundred. And uh, we're not yet... Uh, in the month so, of August. So this is going to be an extraordinary pilgrimage, obviously. I mean, you've got, and, and the clergy, you're going, all the clergy will be there again, and uh, uh, it's probably may have, uh, what's, the, what's the record? They, they will be kind of speeches like dialogue in the mornings, like one hour or two hours, yeah. but then the rest of the day we go and visit sites. Sites. But it's good to have the dialogues because that is meant to be, sure. like, let's talk about how we can approach one, one another. Right, right, right. I want to take the last few moments and I want to share with you uh, real briefly that, um, you know, in my work thus far with Vasula in her time uh, and uh, in these past few months, um, you know, I uh, really enjoyed meeting her and enjoyed the message and, um, and uh, it's uh, really, um, uh, there's so much more to this that we're only scratching the surface here. We're at the very, very beginning, I'm sure, of a very a big uh, and extensive journey ahead. But now that I have the knowledge I have and haven't read the book and really talking through with Vasula and looking at the pilgrimage and the things that are just significant, this is a worldwide development, a worldwide movement, if you will, uh, of bringing back this unity. Um, Vasula shared with me recently, and I want to share it with you all right now, a personal message. And I, I just want to, just a little bit of this, uh, just, to, uh, just for you to understand. And this was a message she received from the Lord just recently that we actually shared, uh, Vasula and I, at a spiritual town hall we just did that you'll be hearing more about ahead. I won't tell you much more today about it, but you'll hear about it through True, True Life and God uh, that we had the pleasure of doing uh, with a, a live studio audience and, and everything. And, and I want to share just a little bit of this with you. I haven't read this live before, but I'm going to do it now. Vasula had read this, uh, but... Um, and this was a message she had delivered to me to say, um, Malcolm, this I want you to see. And this was uh, um, uh, something that I've received from God that uh, needs to be shared with you. And, uh, and here it is. Be my ambassadors for all you do in my name will be as though I myself were appealing through you and the, and the appeal you will make is to be reconciled to me, your God. This should be your theme to glorify me, laboring for me. Your God will lead you to sanctification. Remain in me, working with a spirit of holiness. And so, with the fear of the Lord in mind, your services will take root in me, for they will win people over to me, 
whose minds have been blinded by the God of this world. The message goes on a little bit further to talk about distractions and that uh, we get distracted very easily in this world, obviously. And I want to leave you with just a, a, a thought that I've been sharing with Vasula in the last uh, couple of days and spending some time with her. And what I see, my friends, is it all comes down to our personal commitments, each of us. It's what I call the ripple effect. We all know that if you take a rock and you throw it into the pond, the pond creates a ripple that just comes out as such, right? And you see sometimes those posters that are up on the walls that get people to be encouraged to, uh, to be more successful or to be more innovative or to do something in your life that is better than others. And so it's a ripple effect and you're going to impact other people. Well, as I, I, I shared with her, this ripple impact is, I think, in my opinion, really what this movement is about, this true life in God and the pilgrimage. And this is my opinion now, in my words, as far as we all have a personal commitment in this life to ourselves. I call it personal responsibility. I talk about it all the time to you on all the things on radio, television, podcast, all the things that we, we share back and forth with you. And that, uh, that point of this is that this ripple effect is our, our personal selves, our family, our friends, the people we meet on a daily basis. In our travels, the people we meet. Vasula getting on an airplane and traveling across the ways and talking back and forth with, you never know who you're going to meet on a daily basis. I always look at it as very interesting and a blessing to take that moment of time and just uh, appreciate the people who you are surrounded with and... Uh, uh, you know, the positive things that can come out of all of that. That's what excites me, I guess, about all of this, about everything. <laughs> is that uh, I think there's a bigger mission here for all of us to play in, whatever it might be for you. And, I, and I'm not here to judge or suggest to you what it might be, you know. But I think there is a mission, and I certainly know a lot of, uh, not to bring politics into it, but a lot of our Republicans uh, and Democrat friends know both that... Uh, uh, there's a lot to happen ahead, and the Christian movement is uh, alive and well. You know? So this ripple impact of personal responsibility needs to ripple around the world, and it needs to involve others, and it, it spreads like, just like, like contagious, if you will. It just continues to spread and involve people. So, so I want to thank you for joining me on this Sunday broadcast again. Um, the Ninth Pilgrimage, you'll find out more about it, tlig.org. Very easy. And you'll find out more about True Life in God. Uh, again, I told you what I know. I've read, looked at some of the things. I've read the book, Heaven is Real, but So is Hell. Uh, it's a great mission. Vasula is, there's no doubt in my mind, a special, special person. You know, uh, somebody who I've had the privilege of meeting and uh, uh, just uh, inspired me, you know. Um, with her message and her mission, uh, and as big as it is, it's bigger than her and bigger than everyone else that is around us. And for that, I said to you the very first time I met you, we can all learn something from you, whatever your faith is, you remember. Amen. Yeah. So thank you for being thank here. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Malcolm. It's Malcolm out again, folks. Thank you for being with me. And remember, get involved, get loud.